OK, so this is my first view. So from first view, let's say you want to pass information to second view. So how you will pass? So there is one method nav2. So what this nav2 method basically do? It will just pass this nav2 method. It, it will just navigate user to that view and parallelly it will also pass that information in a parameter. OK, if you go to this uh, nav2 method, you can just search for. Nav2. OK, so this is the nav2 method. So inside the nav2, if you see there are various parameters like the name of route, O parameters, then O component target info and B replace. So we will be using O parameters. We B replace we already see. We will be using only this O parameters. What this O parameter will do? Generally in O parameters, you will pass the parameter information. OK, that parameter it can be mandatory. So basically there are three types of information you can pass means that parameter can be passed as mandatory. How you can identify whether that is mandatory or not based on curly brackets. If any parameter if you are passing in, in curly brackets, that means that parameter is mandatory means that view or whatever the route or whatever the view file you are going to navigate for that. We always have to pass that information so that parameter information is mandatory. If, if you're passing it in the curly brackets, if you're passing it in the colon, you can see here. So they have provided colon into uh, in, at the start of the parameter at the end of parameter. So this means this is the optional parameter. And at the last, if you see it is the query parameter. OK, so the query parameter we don't have to see only these two parameters are highly used mandatory parameter and optional parameters. OK, so let's see that. So I'm going to pass uh, information from. Second, I just I will remove all this. OK, I'm inside the first view now. So from the first view, we have to pass information to second view. So how you will pass? So this is the first views controller file. So inside the second view, I'm going to pass a parameter information that should be passed inside the object. So if you see the parameter information, we need to pass it in the object like this. So this is the object in which we can pass parameter one or parameter two. So you can give any name like uh, let's say you're passing EMP ID. Let's consider you're passing employee ID as a one. OK, and after that you're also passing employee name. As a, so this two information you want to pass to that second view. OK, so now this is done from from controller perspective. This is done now. OK, we just have to include those parameters, those two parameters. Now when we go inside this manifest.json file, so on which view we want to pass, we want to pass that information on second view. So we will add those parameter. We will declare those parameter in the pattern because at the end the parameter is the only thing which will carry that information, not the route. Route is just to identify that route, but actual uh, the values which can be which can be passed that can be done with the help of pattern. So pattern will carry that information and it will send that information to the second view. So after the second view, you can give comma and then you can add. The IDs, OK, the properties that we declared the parameter names. So what is the first parameter EMP ID? So this parameter name. We just have to provide here. Then after that give slash again use opening and closing curly brackets and again use this EMP name. OK, that's it. So this is how we need to pass the information from one view to another view. So we just have to include this and now these are mandatory parameters. So if any one of the parameter information, if I'm not passing, it will not work. OK, that because that those parameters are mandatory in this case. Now once you do. OK, once I click on this navigate to second view, you will see that information in the URL. Can you see now? So this is the employee ID and after that there is the employee name. OK, so this information is passed. Now the thing is 
how to access this information inside the view file inside the second view file. That's the important thing, right? Now this information is available inside the URL, but you want to access that. You want to access that from the URL. How you can access that for accessing that? So there are a couple of events which you can add. So one of them, one of the main event is attach pattern match. So, so what this method will do generally? So it will just call a callback function as soon as the pattern is matched. OK, if, if the pattern is getting matched, so automatically it will call that event a callback function and inside that callback function, it will return the arguments that argument will have this information which we passed in the URL. OK, let's see that. So first of all, you want to add the code, right? So just go to second view and here you can write it inside the on init function. So you can write. What you can write this dot. Get router info dot. Get route. So we want to get the route. So first of all, get route would be the method here. OK, so we have to call this get route. So inside the get route, we have to pass the route name. So what should be the matching route name? It should be this second. Uh, it should be the second view. OK, so if this route is matched. So after that, we will call method. I'll tell you which method. So you just have to go to this library. So from the route, we will call attach pattern match. So this is what the method we will be calling. So what what this uh, method will do? It will attach the event handler function to pattern match means whatever the function we want to call that callback function, that callback function will be triggered as soon as the pattern is matched. If the pattern is incorrect, if you are passing a wrong pattern, so this method will not trigger. OK, we want this method to trigger only when the pattern is getting matched. So that's why we are going to use attach pattern match. OK, get route dot attach pattern match and inside this attach pattern match. There are three parameters. One is the O data, which is optional. Second is the function, which is the mandatory. And the third one is the O listener. O listener means you can pass the current context of uh, controller. That is this. This keyword you can use in the O listener. O data, we don't need any data. You can directly use this F, uh, the function. You can directly declare the function there. So you can write dot underscore on route matched. So this is the function which will be called. After that, you can just give this. OK, now I'm just going to declare this function here. Function, so we need O event here so that O event information it will carry. It will have this arguments. OK, let me do that now. Click on the second view. So now let me put a breakpoint here. So which is the second view? This is the second view. So I'm, what it will do as soon as the route is match, so it will trigger this method. On route match method. So I'm just keep uh, I've kept the breakpoint here. So let me go back to first view. OK, now click on second view. So it will carry that information. It will pass that the EMP ID and EMP name. Now see we have the breakpoint uh, inside the second view. So if you look at this, we have the information of the second uh, the second view. You can see here, right? So this is the information of second view which will have EMP ID and EMP name. So if that is getting match here, so it will directly call that on route match. So inside the on route match, just copy this O event, go here in the console and just O event, expand the O event here. And now inside the M parameters, you will see that information of EMP ID and EMP name. 
can you see this information employee id and employee name so this is what the information we have passed from first view to second view so this information we can get it from the m parameters which is stored inside the arguments so how to get that information you will write o event dot get parameter and inside the get parameter you can pass arguments and after that you can write dot emp id that's it so this is how we need to access second is the emp name okay guys you got it right so this is the syntax that we have to use okay it's a standard syntax Okay, guys, any questions in this? What we did basically, we basically we, we have just passed this information in the parameter and this is the mandatory parameter. When it, how you can guess whether this is mandatory or not based on curly brackets. If if I'm passing the parameter within the curly brackets, it means those are mandatory parameter. I'll, I'll show you how it works. Okay, so uh, wait. We go back in the first view. Now I'm here not passing any information. OK, I'm just going to keep it as blank or just let's say I'm keeping it as a blank. Let's see. I think it will be passed in this case. OK, guys, can you see it failed? Cannot read properties of null. OK, it failed, guys. Why it failed? Because we didn't pass any information in the second parameter. Why? Because this parameter we declare it as a mandatory one. So let's say you want to make this EMP name as an optional. So what you can do? You can just remove that curly brackets and instead of that you can just pass colon. At both ends. Now this parameter is the optional parameter. OK, and now if I try now for this time, so it will work without any problem. OK, let me click on this. OK, see it, it went to second view now. See it's it's opening now. It directly went to second view and now it's it's, it's even displaying the page. Guys, you got it right what I did. So whenever you declare or whenever you pass a parameter as a mandatory, so information is required for that. If you want to make it as an optional, just uh, instead of curly brackets, you can use colon in both cases. Okay, 